Francis Bacon was a painter known for his unsettling depictions of the human form. Prior to painting, Bacon worked as an interior designer. It wasn't until his later 20s when he found out that a more artistic route seemed the most appealing. His breakthrough piece, titled Three Studies for Figures at the Base of a Crucifixion, showcased his truly unique style. The painting is a triptych, or divided into three separate portions. It features three subjects who are beyond human contortion. Any human anatomy is almost absent entirely. Bacon intended these three to be depictions of Greek furies. According to religion and myth, the three furies were female deities who symbolized vengeance. In the context of the painting, they are sitting at the base of a crucifixion, which is not shown in the piece at all. The only thing we are shown are their reactions to what is happening just out of sight. The figure on the far left cowers in fear, perhaps mourning. The middle figure is blinded and gritting its teeth, and the far right is calling out as if it is in pain. There have been many examinations of the piece. Given the context of the Furies being a symbol of vengeance, it leads me to believe that they are gathered to enact vengeance on an unjustified death. Crucifixion would become a reoccurring theme in Bacon's work. Most of the paintings Bacon created prior to 1944's Three Studies have been destroyed by Bacon himself. However, 1933's portrait, simply titled Crucifixion, is the earliest existing work showcasing Bacon's infatuation with the subject. Here we see a mangled stick figure being strung up against a black backdrop. The pose is similar to many former depictions of Christ on the cross. To me, the figure slightly resembles that of a hanging animal strung up in the freezer of a slaughterhouse an image that would also become a reoccurring motif for Bacon. There were two other crucifixion pieces created alongside 1933's Crucifixion. They were titled Crucifixion with Skull and Wound for a Crucifixion. The latter was destroyed by Bacon after negative reviews from critics. Some critics point out that a big part of Bacon's disturbing imagery roots back to his childhood. Bacon grew up on a horse farm with his mother and father in the early 1900s. In one of his final interviews before his death, Bacon described his childhood as something cold and something hard, much like a block of ice. In his teen years, Bacon began having homosexual urges which he had to continually keep a secret from his overbearing father. Bacon often felt as if he was a disappointment in the eyes of his father. This oftentimes came to fruition when Bacon's father would have his stable boys whip him. Despite this, people believed that Bacon was sexually attracted to his father. Regardless, Bacon's father eventually sent him out of the house for his homosexual behavior. After three studies began giving Bacon mainstream attention, he continued to experiment with his style. Around this time, the late 1940s, World War II had finally come to an end, and the first photos and videos of Nazi concentration camps were beginning to surface. While Bacon was exempt from active duty, these harrowing images would go on to deeply affect the artist. Images of mangled bodies, ribs piercing through skin, and arms and legs the size of sticks would all play a part in Bacon's work to come. Painting 1946 stands out as another one of Bacon's most famous works. The portrait is a gut-wrenching depiction of a figure with an umbrella standing below a crucified cow carcass as seen in a slaughterhouse. The figure underneath the umbrella is rumored to be the pre-war British Prime Minister, as he would often walk the streets with an umbrella. 
His yellow flower sticking out of his pocket may signify cowardice. Some art critics also believe that the room that this painting takes place in is the bunker in which Hitler took his own life. A widely known photograph of the time showcased Hitler's bunker to have three window shades, as seen in the background of painting 1946. Following the success of Bacon's Head series, which spanned across paintings titled Head 1, 2, 3, and so on, many of these works show a subject whose identity has been seemingly erased. Faces are smeared, key features are missing, and some infuse the likes of man and monster. These studies would evolve over time, seeing Bacon tackle obscure portraits of various popes and other various human subjects. These twisted faces would go on to inspire contemporary artists and even filmmakers like Christopher Nolan. Nolan, in particular, used the Head series, as well as the Pope portraits, as a reference when coming up with the iconic look for Heath Ledger's titular character, the Joker, in the Dark Knight movie. Heath and, and John Caglione as makeup artist and myself are trying to figure out a way to take the, the clown makeup but make it more threatening somehow, more real world and, and texture it really. And I wound up taking a book of Bacon paintings in and showing them a lot of the different distortions of the way that the paint would run together and the colors would mix. And we wound up applying that to the makeup and letting it have a sort of slightly worn through quality and a sweaty. One of the interesting things for me about seeing uh, paintings in real life is it's a completely different experience than when you see them in a book. Uh, and particularly with oil painting, um, you know, we were talking about bacon and you look at oil painting to, to be able to see the thickness of the paint, to see the, how the brush moved and the brush strokes and everything. Uh, you really start to feel the, the personality behind it, feel the craft of it, which is, is uh, very inspiring. When you get into the realm of digital imaging, it's, uh, I think, inherently a little sterile. Uh, inherently, there's a little bit more of a barrier between what you're trying to do and, and reaching the audience. The 1950s fragment of a crucifixion saw two creatures battling in the intersection of a T. Upon first glance, it almost looks as if the two forms were once one, having recently pulled apart from one another. One of the forms screams in agony as the other bleeds in silence. Perhaps this is in reference to Bacon's detachment from religion. Despite his depictions of crucifixion, Bacon was an outspoken atheist. His Christian upbringing was long gone after the abuse he suffered at the hands of his father. This detachment most likely played a part in his interest in painting various popes, the most famous being the portrait of Pope Innocent X. This piece shows what appears to be Pope Innocent being wiped from existence. The iconic scream, a now common theme in Bacon's work, conveys a sense of pain. The portrait is plagued with a sense of loss, as if the Pope is experiencing a crisis of faith, as Bacon once experienced himself. Two major deaths permeate Bacon's life. The first came in 1951, when Bacon's longtime nanny and mother figure had passed away. The other was longtime lover George Dyer. While spending time in France, Bacon returned home one night to find that Dyer had committed suicide in their hotel room. This led to the haunting black triptyches. Each of these works showcased the feelings Bacon had been dealing with following the suicide. Bacon described them as an exorcism from everything he was feeling. Each of the triptyches, while in three parts, does not always read from left to right. Most showcase a slumped over figure, but how they got to that position is up for interpretation. Bacon had always said that he worked best in chaos. His art studio, which many would consider to be unfit working conditions, helped Bacon exceed in his art. 
He believed many things in life are left up to chance. We have no power over what happens until it already has. This philosophy could also be seen in Bacon's work. Painting 1946, for example, supposedly began as a portrait of a gorilla, but soon evolved into something much different. Towards the end of his life, Bacon was visiting Madrid when his chronic asthma grew worse. The developing illness took Bacon's ability to breathe, as well as speak. He eventually died of a heart attack in April of 1992. After his death, a large auction took place in order to distribute his works. One of the undisclosed triptyches sold for over six million dollars. Though his life may have been as bleak as his artwork, Bacon's experimentation in surrealist art is shown as a reflection of the society he grew up in. It was one of claustrophobia as well as isolation. One can only hope that Bacon finally found peace after death. <laughs>